Hello everyone, I'm so happy to have you back today. So as promised, I'm finally putting out my tutorial on how to get on my server, yay! We've cleared quite a few plots, I think we have enough room to bring new people in, so I'm really, really excited. Before we get into that though, I want to tell you a couple of things. One, I'm assuming with this tutorial that you already have the CurseForge app installed. If you don't, there's a lot of tutorials out there. I'll link one down in the description if you need help to get that app on your computer. It's really, really easy. So don't feel intimidated by it. Number two, I'm also assuming you already have a Discord account. We use Discord as a way to communicate with you on updates of the server, make sure that you've read the server rules, um, any announcements we might have. We also run events through Discord, so that's why it's required to have an account. Keep in mind, you never have to speak if you don't want to. You don't have to have a mic. You don't have to get on a chat. When we do events, you can join and just listen. So never feel pressured to talk within Discord. I myself don't even like chatting in Discord. I'm really, really shy by nature, so I completely understand. A couple of other things. <laughs> I promise we're gonna get started in just a second. Number one, I do recommend a strong internet connection. Number two, we do have quite a few mods. I think there's 32 of them. That's a lot of mods for some computers to run. So that's just something to keep in mind. The third and probably the most important thing, we're very, very serious about you not sharing any personal information whatsoever on the Discord server and the Minecraft server. Now that is for your own safety. Something else I wanna mention before jumping in, this server is not a creative mode server you will be in survival only. We have implemented some mods to help you be in survival, make it not so difficult. You can still fly while in survival mode and we've provided different mines for you to get ore and stuff like that. So it's not your typical survival experience, but there is no creative mode building. So if that is something that disinterests you, there you go. You don't have to finish the video. <laughs> But if you're still interested, let's go ahead and jump into this. So I tried to make a brand new Discord account so that I could do this as you would be coming in. Unfortunately though, the account got banned instantly for suspicious behavior. I don't know why. So I just went ahead and kicked Warren out of the Discord and I'm gonna use him as the guinea pig. <laughs> I'm sure he won't mind. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click that invite link that is linked at the bottom of the video. If I can find where I put my invite link. Okay, so here is my invite to get into the server. I'm gonna go ahead and click join. And when you first join, this is what you're gonna see. It looks like it's all messed up, but it's supposed to be like that, it's fine. The first thing you wanna go to is this welcome channel. There could be people waving at you and this right here might get moved up, but this is what you wanna look at. So it says, hey, Oren, it's Oren. Well, they've already changed my nickname because they know exactly who I am, but hey, Oren, welcome to NY with JD. Please go to these channels to begin. So you're gonna to wanna to click sign in first. So you go here, <laughs> you're gonna go here, and then you're going to go right here and say what your nickname is. Now this is not for your Minecraft username. That's gonna go somewhere else. This is just what you wanna be called in Discord. So Oren obviously likes to be called Oren. So you're gonna type that and hit enter. Once you have that done, they'll change your name to what you want it to be and you just move on. So you'll go to step two, the rules. And as you can see, as I'm clicking these things, it's moving up here too. You can get to them here, but just kind of to let you know. So this isn't a very important channel. This is talking about our rules on Discord. You definitely want to go through and read these very carefully because once you do that, you're going to agree to them. So you're not gonna have any excuse for breaking any of these rules because we're assuming that you read them by agreeing to them. Number one, like I mentioned already, do not share personal information. That's a really big deal because that can lead to an instant ban. Um, no spamming, that includes using caps. Use all the channels appropriately. If you wanna share pictures, use the media channel. And by pictures, I mean pictures of maybe your pets or whatever else, just not your face. Um, or if you wanna talk about selling an animal in Minecraft, you would go to that channel. That's kind of what we mean by that. Once you read all these and you feel comfortable with it, 
you're gonna go ahead and click this heart one time. You don't need to do it more than once. And that will show on your profile that you agreed to the rules. But once you click it one time, now you just kind of have to wait. And that was fast. As you can see, the rest of the server has now opened up to me because my role has been changed. So now there's a lot more things to look through. This is where it can get kind of confusing. Now, if you want to, you can head to the roles section and right here you can put in what different roles you want. So you can put in the different games you're interested in. So swim, um, other games, your pronouns, you just click which one of these you prefer, um, what type of ping replies you want, and then what announcements you want. So let's say you wanna make sure you hear the server announcements. I'll go ahead and click that. And maybe I also want to know about the events. Or if you're interested in staff applications when they open up, just click whichever one of these you want. Okay, now that I have my roles set up, I'm officially in the Discord, I can start looking around. Now, getting on to the Minecraft server itself, where you're gonna wanna go first is right here, Minecraft server rules. These are really, really important too, because again, we're going to assume that you have read through these and yes, there's a lot, it's true, there's a lot but it's good to have a general idea of what we expect. That way you don't get in trouble for breaking rules in the server. So again, here's the general behavior, you know, no swearing or cussing, no sharing personal, personal information. Don't be toxic, no spamming. Um, right here, it kind of tells you how many horses you can have, how many dogs, not to change coat colors. And if you're interested in having more chunks, that's where Ko-Fi comes in. Um, all the donations on Ko-Fi go straight back into the server. Our different building rules, so you wanna try and not be too close to other people. And basically, you know, our economy and trade horse, it's all separated here for you to read. And I know, like I said, it's a lot, but it's important. Once you read those, you glance them over and you agree, you're going to click this heart again only one time and that's gonna show that you have now agreed to the Minecraft server rules. Next thing you're gonna do is head down to Minecraft usernames. This is where you're going to type in your, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can see my staff trying to keep up with me. Okay, so this is where you're gonna type in your Minecraft username. So this can get kind of confusing because up here on your Minecraft launcher, there's two names. There's one on the top left, and then there's one on the bottom right. You don't want to put the top left. That's your Microsoft account. And we don't need that. We need your username. So that's gonna be this bottom right name right here. So you're just going to type that in right here, exactly how it's written, which for Warren, it's like this. And you're going to send that and you're going to wait. Now, once there's a green check mark under that name, that means you have been whitelisted and you're free to join the server. Our staff are pretty on top of it, as you can see. That means that I am now whitelisted and I can log into the server. So that's super, super exciting, yay! And if you want to, you're more than welcome to check out the rest of these channels. All the stuff regarding Minecraft will be in this section here. We do have a lost and found for animals that have gone missing. Um, if your horse wanders away, which happens, those horses can wander really far. You'd come here and look for them. There's a license channel. If you're interested in opening your own shop, you would come here and include this information. You can kind of see how people have written theirs. The green check mark means it's been approved. If you've been denied, you'll have a red X. If you do have any questions, I recommend that you come to the help desk first and read these different things. More than likely, there'll be an answer here. So it's best to do that before you ask a question. If you've looked through these items and you still can't figure it out, you can always come here and ask the question you have. Okay, so now that you're whitelisted, what do you do? Well, let's go to getting started. A lot of the info I just went over is right here, such as the CurseForge information, um, your, you, your Minecraft username down in the corner, which we just talked about, our current list of mods and the mod pack. This is what's gonna help a lot. 
you can directly download the mod pack that we have without having to individually add each mod just by clicking this link. When you do that, you're gonna get this uh, warning and it's fine, I promise. You're gonna click it, you're gonna let it start to download. And when you do that, it will then show up in your downloads folder. I currently have it hidden on my second monitor, but I'm gonna go ahead and drag it over. So here is the file you need. You do not want to extract this file. You wanna keep it exactly how it is. So on CurseForge, yours is gonna look different than this. You're probably not gonna have all these different things, or you might have your own. Either way, it's fine. You wanna go up to this little button right here and click Create Custom Profile. Now from here, ignore all this and just go to Import and click that, and then you're going to select what we just downloaded. So wherever you put that file, find it. Mine happens to be right here on the desktop, and then Open and it's going to automatically create the profile for you. So everything will be just as you need it to log in right away. Okay, the next thing that you wanna do on your profile, your brand new profile, is go to these dots, go to profile options, uncheck this box, and raise this up, I would say to at least the 7,000 mark. Um, this kind of depends on how much memory your computer has in total. You'll notice some of these mods are out of date. That's fine, leave them alone. We haven't updated the Gecko Lib, Player Animator, or Starworm because it does not work with shaders. The shaders make the horses slide around and I don't know if it's gonna be fixed. Hopefully it will be soon, but anyway, just ignore all these little arrows. So now that we have our profile exported and ready to go, we should just be able to hit play and launch. Before I do that though, and you can skip this part if you're not interested, I do have some mods I recommend getting just to help you in the game. One of them is called Just Enough Items and that will help you to unlock every single crafting recipe there is, which will help a lot since you are in survival mode. It's really easy to add on to this mod list. You would just go here, Go to add more content. And luckily just enough items is right on top there because it is, yeah, it's pretty popular. So when you wanna add it, you just click install. It'll do everything for you. Also, this zip file does have my resource packs that I use. You do not have to turn them on if you do not want to. I think they make the game look absolutely beautiful, but again, they are not required. Okay, now that I've got a couple of mods I wanted to add, we can go ahead and click play and launch the game. So I made a big mistake when I first started recording this and forgot to allocate more RAM. So as I'm first joining the server, you're gonna notice I'll move about four or five steps, freeze. And that's why um, getting more RAM is really, really important. So because I can't rejoin the server and start in the very beginning again, I'm gonna have to show you that footage, even though it is kind of rough, but I'm going to redo the rest of the tour with the correct amount of RAM. Now that we have it launched, we're gonna go to multiplayer. Do not show this screen again, proceed. So now we're going to add server. And again, you can call this top part, whatever you want. So unwind with JD. And the server address is minecraft.unwindwithjd.com. Click done, and here's the server. So this red X, it's giving me that error because I added those couple of mods that are not on the server side, but that's okay. You can still log into the game for the most part. Sometimes there'll be an error that's not related to those mods and that's a separate issue but don't be afraid of the red x at first okay so when you first log in this is what you're gonna see a welcome banner and this is actually new for me too to be honest <laughs> so i get to go through it with you just like you know a new player so you first spawn in and you're going to see these different signs um, just letting you know we're still in development and kind of some of the rules again, no spamming, no cussing, don't harm other animals, um, be respectful, all that kind of stuff, okay? 
So then you're directed to go downstairs. And when you first log in, and especially in Willowbrook, which is our main city, it is kind of choppy. It takes a little bit, but it gets better. I don't know what Bartholomew's doing down here. We're gonna go behind the stairs. We're gonna click the button. And I was given all of this stuff. I've got myself a bed to start with, a name tag, some leads, basic set of saddles, or basic tack set, and an anvil, some burlap sacks, and some bread. You're gonna go through this maze and read all these signs, and you can kind of see down there is Willowbrook. See it a little bit, but just keep going. Take a look around. I tell you about a couple of features, but it's best you don't do them just yet. I don't need to go through all these signs with you right now. When you join, you need to go through them. All right, so we're gonna take note of where you are. So we're gonna hit M and this is our map. So this is where I am now. And you can kind of see as you zoom out all of these patches of colors, that is areas that other players own. It's pretty crazy. Go to that black building down there when you're done here. So the black building is right there. That's the one that the sign is talking about. So we're gonna get our very first horse. This is really, really exciting. I wonder what color I'm gonna get. All right, so let's click the button. And there is my swim egg. Ooh, I don't wonder what color it's gonna be. Okay, so this is me rejoined with more RAM allocated to the file. So now hopefully we'll get a smoother experience. We just left the uh, spawn in tower thingy and this is what we're met with. So we have, now that you're free, please go to the info center, also check your inventory and meet your brand new horse. I already had spawned my horse, but here he is. It looks exactly like Riddick, which is really cute. So we'll place Riddick right here. I think that was my lead from last time doing it. Excuse me, Riddick. Oh my gosh, I'm so used to being in creative. Okay, there we go, just chill out. So go into the info center, and right here you can read some of the most frequently asked questions as well as a lot of um, the main rules as well just kind of to cover some basic commands, like how much money do I have? You use flash money and it will tell you I have $1,071. You won't start with quite that much. Like I said, I recorded earlier, but I'm having to redo this. So that's why I have more. Um, this is how to transfer money to a player. Um, just some more, you know, frequently asked questions and things like that. Also important are in the red signs. Swim tack boxes are banned, and they're banned because they do not work well with the mod we're using for our currency. It causes crashes. You can own eight horses, unless you're a Ko-Fi member, then of course you can own more. Um, cannot change horse coat. Anyway, you just read over this, and then right here it explains you need to get your horse going and go find somewhere to get some land built. So I'm going to use my burlap sack that I was given, grab my horse because he is not tame yet. And while I'm here, I'm going to explain to you these important stores. So hard to find is important because in this shop are items that you cannot get in the world. They're either, you either cannot get them or they're really difficult to find. We don't have mobs on the server, so there's no ender dragon. Um, there's no Enderman. There's, you know, these different things that mobs will drop you can't get. We also had to put in the vanilla animal spawn eggs because they weren't here first either. So anyway, this store is where you'll go to buy these different items that are hard to find. And that's kind of an important thing to look for. Another thing, the junk shop. This shop will buy items from you for cash. Look, just dirt, plain dirt, will get you $20 for a stack. Anyone that has done any sort of terraforming themselves or digging at all will know you will end up with more dirt than you know what to do with. This is what you can do with it. Make some quick money. 
Same for cobblestones. If you build your own mine, you'll have so much cobblestone. It's ridiculous. And there's so many more items that this store will buy from you for money. There's another story up here with more stuff. And another story up here with even more stuff. And this isn't the only shop we have that will buy items from you for cash. Trinata has a whole nother store. Now keep in mind, any store you come across that has Frack's name on it is probably an important store. They're either going to sell items that you need or buy items that you want to get rid of for cash. So keep that in mind. Here in Willowbrook, we also have the Alphabet store. These are completely free. They're pre-made signs with letters like this one I have right here. As you can see, it just has a letter on it. So you can freely take these. There's numbers as well so that you can name your shop or your farm or whatever you want to do. We also have some talented people that use chisels and bits really, really well. I'm sure they would love to commission out some signs if you would rather do that. Over here in Willowbrook is an events board. Events will be posted on here as well as Discord. So if we have some sort of auction, which we love to do, or if we have some sort of jumping show or race or something, it'll be posted here. Right here is a swim shop. Now the prices of these items are kind of expensive, but that is because all the swim items are craftable and really, really easy to make. If you spend a little bit of time, just even if you bought the ingredients from Frack Shop, it'd be way cheaper to make it yourself. So this is expensive purely out of laziness. <laughs> We've also got a dog shop around here somewhere so that you can buy yourself a dog. Um, there's lots of cool things in Willowbrook. It's honestly just kind of worth looking around. And as you can see, I am in survival. I'm not on my main character at all. So this is an alt account. But yeah, you, we have survival flight built right in. So it's not so bad. We have implemented a travel system in both major cities. What is this? This is so super cool. I have not seen this yet. That is amazing. Wow. Okay. Anyways, this big tower is our hub for our different waystones. Now, the waystones will take you to different areas in the map. These basic waystones with no color is our main locations link. And this, you know, leads to Trinata and the competition grounds and Dogwood Road, which is right near my ranch. Um, Rack Estates. <laughs> the clay mine, which I'll go over in a minute, just the main areas of the map. These colored ones are separated into sections. So like the Trinata region is green, the East Desert Link is yellow. So if I look at the map, East Desert Link is pretty much everything over here. So as you can see, they're all kind of separated into quadrants. I tried, I tried my best. It's not great, but anyway, um, depending on where you find your plot is what color waystone you'll get. So from this hub, you can teleport different areas, but this isn't the only place to do that. If you go to your inventory, you'll see this little scroll right here. And this scroll is the exact same as using one of these. So anywhere in the world, you can actually use this and return to like, the main cities or, you know, any one of the main points on the map, which is really, really convenient. So the first thing I recommend doing when you're first getting into the game is looking for a place to claim. So let's go ahead and take a look at the map. All these colored regions, again, are claimed spaces. So as you can see, there's quite a few options here. This is pretty blank. Over here is blank. All right here is really blank. Then we've got over here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Far East Desert region because it looks like there's quite a few areas to choose from there. And here we are. It's not super deserty, is it? I think I'll go straight south. And if this is a nice area, I might just claim that. <laughs> and this happens to be Hannah's giant racetrack. So no, we will not be claiming this. But we'll just keep flying straight south and we might find somewhere decent to set up. Remember, as the rules state, we cannot claim anything that already has builds. So even if something is unclaimed, but there's a build on it, 
we cannot take it. This area right here is nice and flattened out. It seems like there's half of a mountain cut out of it, but you know what? That's okay. It's already prepared to be built on. So I think I'm going to make a claim right here. So when you decide on an area you want, all you have to do is push M to bring up your map, go up here and click claimed chunks. And now a grid pops up. So this is a chunk. Now, when you first log in, if you're not a Ko-Fi member, you will have 75 chunks to spend. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way to 75. Now, because this character is part of my claim, parties are a whole different thing, but um, I obviously have a lot of, <laughs> of chunks. You won't have the quite this many, but this is kind of what it will look like. Now that you have your plot claimed, well, now what? Well, there's a few different options here. Um, if this land weren't already flattened, you could go into chat and ask a builder to help you come and flatten the land with world edit. That's a completely viable option. If you would prefer to start leveling yourself and collect that dirt and that stone for some money, then yeah, go for it. If you're not much of a builder, it's not really for you, then here is the perfect place to go. Go to your map and head over to Builder's Island. Now Builder's Island is pretty cool because we have a bunch of pre-built houses and barns. So if you don't wanna have to build for yourself, well, guess what? A builder can come in with World Edit and slap one of these things down for you and bam, ready to go. There's some really beautiful pre-built options too. So if you don't have time to build, you don't wanna build, these are perfect ways for you to just jump right into the game. I recommend myself for you to build your own just because using your own creativity, it's a way to spend time on the server and it's a lot of fun, but I understand that's not for everybody. Now by way of building, if you do wanna build for yourself, don't worry, we have options. If you go back to your map and then go to the warehouse, in these warehouses, we have a bunch of free items from decorations like the flowers, flower pots, refrigerators, lamps, um, light fixtures, windows, all the way to siding and the different swim uh, pretty bushes and stuff like that. All of it is here for completely free. You don't have to pay anything. So you can just come here, load up on all the stuff you want, head back to your build and go ahead and place it all. That makes your job a little bit easier. There's two warehouses, both have two stories. So when you are here, make sure that you look pretty closely at both. Now, besides the warehouses to help you on your journey, we also provide a clay mine. This is filled by our admins. So basically you can come here and look at all this clay. I mean, look how quickly, without even a tool, I'll use this girth as my tool. Look how quickly I can just grab up a bunch of clay. I mean, it's really that easy. And imagine if I had a tool no problem whatsoever. So just that quickly, I've got 52 clays. I mean, pretty easy, right? That's not so bad. Now, if you're not looking for clay, say you would rather have some sort of minerals. We have a mine with the exact same idea. We plop this thing in here. And of course for this, you will need tools. And I do think we actually sell some pickaxes out here. Um, maybe not. I thought we had a shop with some pickaxes out here. Might have to serve or sell some. But anyway, you'll go down here and start looking for any kind of diamonds or emeralds. Um, it looks like the mine is pretty mined out right now. <laughs> but uh, we do try to refill it and get it, you know, properly filled. The percentages are kind of like that of um, building a natural mine, but a little bit better. So anyway, it's kind of nice to just come here, 
and have a quick way to look for those items. So once you go mining and you go in the clay mine, let's head over to Trinata to look at the other shops that are available. Trinata has more important shops from Frack that we need to keep in mind. So again, any shops with Frack written on it, we need to <laughs> keep on our radar. So if we go into this shop of Frack's, he sells all kinds of cool stuff from coal to normal redstone, lapis lazuli, uh, the anything. I mean, there's so much here. There's another story up here as well. So again, in game, if you're looking for something, come here first. This is one of your best shots at getting what you need. He sells like everything. Then right across the street, another sell me stuff shop. Oh, perfect. So let's see what we have that we can sell. He would buy feathers, wheat, um, even flowers. You can get these things just as you run along the grass. Like it's crazy. Um, he buys sand. Oh, and look, he buys clay. Let's sell our clay. So just that quickly, I made 24 bucks and I hit like, what, five things of clay. It really would take hardly any time at all to make money if you really wanted to. So I think that's pretty much it for getting onto the server and kind of what to do once you're on the server. I hope that that answered your questions. I'm sorry it took so long for this video to be put out. I wish you the best of luck in coming in game and I really cannot wait to see you there. Thank you guys so much for your support. As always, I appreciate you so much. And until next time, bye guys.